Hello and welcome back to the Prismatica Dev channel. Today we're going to be doing something that is the first time I've done this particular thing. Uh, and it might also be the very last time I do this thing. And that is we're actually going to be reviewing and looking at a, a plugin on the Unreal Marketplace. Now, usually I wouldn't, you know, go into like plugins and blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm a very like vanilla engine kind of guy, but I've followed the development of this plugin. It's just, it blew my mind. Uh, and it's basically a game changer in a lot of ways. So the plugin in question is Alex Rivers code plugin for Runtime Vertex Color Paint and Detection. The plugin, the plugin, the movie. And you can see by the screenshots that you can use it for things like, you know, painting things to be wet. Um, it works on cloth physics. You can paint at location. You can combine with, you know, particle collisions. You can paint by shape. Just all these like amazing tools and stuff. And there is an active discord. So there's always support and questions you can ask about the plugin but i think the main selling point is that well i can't see how much it is here i'm pretty sure it was 32 australian dollars which for the americans would be like 20 dollars so it's not free but it's it's <laughs> so on the page of this plugin there is a, a demo project. It's like 200 megabytes. You can download it without having purchased the, uh, the plugin. Uh, and we're just going to kind of have a little, little guided tour. We're not going to go through all of them, but there are so many damn awesome features. So basically the gist of the plugin is you can vertex paint at runtime. So if you've seen my intro to vertex painting guide video, blah, 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 where we go over, you know, how you can implement vertex paint in your shaders and stuff, then you can probably start to imagine all of the possibilities that vertex paint at runtime, you know, unlocks. And this plugin also deals with detection of vertex paint. So for example, if I paint some sand here and then what was the camera view? And then I walk on the sand a bit then you can see the feet of the character can start to get sandy. And then as I walk away, they get less sandy and blah, 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 blah. You know, based on how sandy the feet are, even spawn some, some decal footprints and whatnot. It's just even, even just this first little tile, we are looking at some really insane stuff. And before we dive in much further to this Runtime Vertex painting, have you ever thought about learning how to paint in real life? Well, I have the perfect thing for you, and that is the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with hundreds of thousands of students and thousands upon thousands of super high quality classes, whether that's in visual design, whether it's in the audio fields, creative writing and character design. Being an indie developer requires you to be a jack of all trades, which is why I would recommend character design from first idea to final illustration by Jazza Brooks, who is a fellow Australian YouTuber. So make sure that you click the link in the description to get your one free month trial of Skillshare. And thank you very much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So back to the plugin. You can see that you know, this is like a pretty low density mesh and you know, the color by itself looks pretty trash, but like I go over in my vertex paint video, there are a lot of sneaky ways that you can break up the texture using mostly using height lerp. We can also see here that we can actually paint between different meshes. So, you know, when we hit a mesh, as long as we're doing a sphere trace and hitting both of the meshes, they can both receive the same paint command, which is hella cool. And as it says here, it does support the alpha channel. So you get four channels. And if you do some kind of, again, I go over it in my vertex paint video, you can kind of bring that up to eight channels in a way or eight effects using four channels. If you use 0.5 as like a neutral point, and then you have two exclusive effects on either side of that 0.5. So maybe you have, you know, mossiness, at one of the red channel and then 
burntedness at zero of the red channel and 0 0.5 is neither of them because you know if you've got moss painted on something and then you burn it it will burn the moss away and that way you can kind of save on channels and get you know the most out of your your vertex paint so one of the coolest things about this plugin is that it can actually detect where vertex color is painted or where certain channels or certain amounts or just there's so many tools that you can use um, the example here is that oil, which is the alpha channel, spawns fire when it is shot. And then that fire spawns more fire if it hits another bit of the um, of the, the oily part. And then it also makes the, the alpha channel, you know, decrement to, to zero or just turns the effect off basically. So we can actually paint this and set it on fire and it's going to do exactly what we tell it to do. It's going to follow that. We can also just keep painting it, um, which is really cool. And, you know, it will just act as you would expect it to. <laughs> and you would be happy to know that this actually works on skelly meshes as well. The, the, the whole suite of tools works on skeletal meshes. So... You know, if, the, if this guy and this guy is covered in oil uh, and the ground is covered in oil, then, you know, we can, again, spawn our fire spheres and then have them propagate to things that have this vertex channel affected. We could also do like this guy and then some paint around to this guy. And then, and then if we set this guy on fire, uh, then it will catch onto the ground and eventually make its way around and then set this guy on fire. It's, it's, it's just so cool. There's just so many possibilities with this, this plugin. You can even detect the percentage of coverage on an entire mesh. So this is his <laughs> splaboon example. Uh, so if we just paint, you know, F everywhere, or sorry, the alpha channel everywhere, you know, green channel everywhere, red channel everywhere, blah, blah, blah. You can see that the percentage increases and it also works by painting all of the LODs. So it basically just gets all of the LODs and repeats the, you know, the command that you give it. Um, and it works with merged meshes. So if you're like me and you're using skeletal mesh merging or you're kind of making procedural things, this can work with them. And another really cool thing is that you can actually save and load snippets of the the vertex paint so this is the same mesh here but it's just loading a different snippet and then we get to some of the really juicy stuff uh which is you, you can actually make it affect cloth physics so if we press the blue button which makes him wet you can see that this gets weighed down as though it is wet and then it's gradually drying off and it becomes you know wavy in the wind again and then we can you know make them wet again <laughs> it's just so cool it's so much cool stuff <laughs> so something really cool that i completely missed <laughs> before um is painting things by volume so you can see as i move through this chair all of the parts of me that intersect the chair are affected uh, you can also paint by shapes. Shapes are a lot cheaper than, you know, a full collision. So if we go up to our waist in the water and then come out, you can see that we are wet up to that point. Uh, and it's programmed to just dry off after a bit. This also works with, you know, just shapes at weird angles and spheres. Spheres are, I think, the cheapest uh, one because it's literally just distance from the thing and then here we have an example that just says you know if we paint on this side of the mesh and we go over to the other side it won't have painted over here because it has limited itself by the the normals so you can probably start to see the potential that this plugin has on maybe your project or maybe it's even spawned a few new ideas of you know games in your head Personally, I'm going to be using this for all of the, the prop damage in Prismatica, as well as blood on props and, you know, buildings and that kind of stuff. Um, if you follow the Prismatica project, you'll know that I have this really cool system for painting blood over the, the landscape 
um, but that only works with the floor surface because it's using a capture from below. And so I've always been looking for a way to not use decals on, you know, when blood hits walls and all that kind of stuff. Because obviously decals, every decal is a draw call. Whereas this vert paint stuff, it's, it's literally zero draw calls because, you know, the, the vertex paint is being rendered anyway on the, uh, on the mesh. And all we're doing is just changing it at runtime and then it just continues to render as, you know, as normal. So you can completely change the vertex paint of an object and it isn't going to cost any extra performance. So let's jump into the engine and actually just we'll do like a few little test cases of things that you could use this plugin for that you couldn't really do with any other method. So as you can see here, I've got some balls and in our player character, we are just doing a, a line trace towards our, our cursor. Uh, and then we are just doing the very simple paint on mesh at location. And it is just doing an area of 25 units uh, and then painting the red channel. So if we go into here and now you can see if I just press P, you can see we are now painting on these uh, on these spheres. And I've just got this material set up to just show what the vertex colors are. So the first thing we could try is like a vehicle, like an accurate vehicle deform kind of shader. So say you've got a vehicle and you know, you get hit on this particular part of the vehicle and it like dints it inwards. And it's like, oh, cool. This game has like super accurate physics and whatever. But in reality, it's just a, a cheeky little shader effect. So basically, we're just going to get the vertex color. And with the, the red channel, the one that we're painting, we are going to multiply it by, I don't know, a negative number, maybe like 20, maybe even bigger just to exaggerate it. So negative 30, and then we're going to multiply that by the vertex normal world space. Uh, this is an effect that I've gone over in the vertex normal world space video, I believe. So this is just saying when the vertex color is red, move the vertex in the direction of the vertex normal by 30 units. Uh, and we're just going to chuck that into the world position offset. And one more thing we'll do, we're just going to make the effect a little bit less extreme because at the moment it's painting it like fully uh, all at once. So now if we have a little look and we hit this, you can see that it is deforming the mesh um, in the direction of the vertex normal, uh, which is <laughs> which is super cool. So you could take this one step further and you could use it for some kind of gore effect. Maybe you're doing like a like, you know, a zombie game. So this is just doing just a simple height lerp just to break up the, the texture and stuff. And we're doing the same deform, but then we're also lerping between you know, a flesh tone and some some bloody color. So if we look at our result, uh, you can see as we start spamming the, the P button, um, we start to deform the mesh and it also lerps into this kind of gore, bloody texture. Um, so you can imagine for like a, a zombie game or something, this would be super handy because it means you don't have to deal with render targets. It means you also don't have to deal with like decals and the weird ways that decals project. And you can also do well position offset with it. This method just piggybacks off of the, the vertex color, which already exists on the mesh. So that's just like a couple of examples that I just whipped up on the spot. Uh, but you know, you could do things like, uh, like Splatoon because this plugin can detect, you know, the percentage of a, a mesh that is painted with a certain color. You could do something like uh, like power wash simulator where, you know, like you're, you're washing stuff. And again, you just use the vertex paint to lerp between, you know, the dirty version and the clean version. If you were doing like a, like a vehicle based game, you could have like a, a dirtiness mask and then, you know, you could wash it off when you go into water or you could wash it off with a hose or something. There's just, there's just so many possibilities that this plugin unlocks. So that's it for this video. All I really wanted to do was just show this plugin, get some ideas, you know, boiling in the old idea boiler. If you have any questions about the plugin, you can join Alex's Discord, which is on the marketplace page for 
the plugin. And if you need help with anything else game dev related in general, you can join the Prismatica Dev Learning Hub, which is also linked in the description. I just want to take a moment to thank all of the patrons of the channel. You guys are very spectacular. And I guess with that, we say goodbye. Goodbye.